Hey there, so Disney Dreamlight Valley has a huge world behind it and it can be pretty daunting especially when you first start out. So in this video, I will be sharing 22 tips that's crucial for you to know to make Disney Dreamlight Valley a more enjoyable experience for you. Now if you have any additional tips that you would like to share as well, please feel free to share them down in the comment section below. But without further ado, let's not waste any more time and jump straight into tip number 1, the fast traveling system. Now you are able to fast travel around the world of Disney Dreamlight Valley via these wells. But one crucial tip that I can give you is that you don't really need to interact with the well to actually fast travel. Instead, you can just open up your map and simply select any of the wells that you have unlocked and that itself will allow you to fast travel from anywhere on the map. This is important because sometimes you might find yourself stuck in certain places due to a bug or some sort. So this will definitely cut down on your travel times. Now for the second tip, you can actually track down some of the villagers in your valley by simply selecting them from the map. Sometimes you just want to find a certain character to turn in quests or even just by talking to them, so this will be a great way to actually track them down because they could be anywhere on the map. Tip number 3, you can actually pretty much move anything in the game. This includes huge rocks that are in the way, trees that you find distracting, or even trees and bushes with fruits on them, which is why I like to move all of those fruits with trees and bushes nearby my house in the starting area just so I can collect them all easily without running around the map. Tip 4, you can actually trick your way through blocked areas by moving the teleport well. For example, these mushrooms are currently blocking my path and you need to do a certain late game quest to access them. However, by simply moving the well to the other side of the mushrooms, I can now teleport to it, allowing me to roam around the other side without worrying about coming back in the later game. Just remember that if you want to get out of here, simply teleport back out. Tip number 5, I want to talk about the energy system in the game. Now if you noticed, Disney Dreamlight Valley has an energy system and almost all activities will require energy to do them. However, don't be alarmed because if you were like me, you probably thought that this is just like any other mobile game where you basically get locked behind progress once you run out of energy. But luckily, this game isn't like that. Simply head back to your house and rest up to regain your energy or just consume some of these fruits around the valley to get your energy up and running again. There are plenty of energy gaining food around so you never have to worry about your energy running out. And this is also why I mentioned to place all the trees and bushes with fruits near your house so you always know where to find them. Now tip number 6, in regards to the energy bar, you can actually overcharge your energy bar by eating cooked foods. Normal food like apples or blueberries will not overcharge your energy bar. These foods will have a range of 1 to 5 stars with them and the more stars it has, the more energy it gives you. So basically it's like your second energy bar. And did you know that you can actually sprint in the game as well? Now that's not a button for you to run around in Disney Dreamlight Valley, but instead you will be moving at a much faster pace if you have an overcharged energy bar. In other words, you are well fed. So for tip number 7, if you always want to move around at a faster speed, remember to at least store up some cooked food in your inventory. Moving on to tip number 8, my recommendation is to unlock Remy ASAP in Disney Dreamlight Valley. You can find him here in this section of the main castle and by completing his quest, you are able to unlock and cook different recipes that are available around the valley. There are actually more than hundreds of recipes for you to discover and because you already know how important and useful it is to be always well fed, I find Remy to be the number one priority to unlock in terms of character for all newer players. Tip number 9, craft more storage spaces. Now you're gonna find that you have tons of stones, branches, rocks and all sort of extra things in your inventory and I would recommend to not throw them away. Instead, put them into your storage spaces because trust me, you might not need them now but you're gonna be needing a lot of them in the later game. And the last thing you want to do is to farm up around hundreds of these materials later. So yeah, store your unwanted materials into your chest. Tip number 10, I want to address about these dig holes for a second. 
Now if you're into a lot of digging or especially farming, you're going to have a ton of these holes in your valley. And the best way to cover them up again is to simply place furnitures above them. This will immediately cover them up so you don't have to go through them one by one anymore to close the holes up. I mean yeah, the holes will automatically be covered up anyway in about 4 real life days but this is something to keep in mind in case you want your valley to be spotless immediately. Tip number 11, unlocking newer areas doesn't mean that you get to unlock new characters. So if you are looking for new villagers to fill your valley up, simply head to the main castle and enter through the realms there. This will allow you to meet and unlock different characters to be available in your valley after you've helped them out and done a few quests with them. This is crucial because I see a ton of people trying to spend Dreamlights to access these expensive late game areas just to find out that there are no new characters there. So if meeting and filling up your valley with villagers is your focus, head over to the main castle area instead. Now for tip number 12, you have to be careful in assigning roles to your villagers. Do note that you cannot change their roles anymore after you assign one to them, so I would highly recommend to at least make sure that every row has at least one villager tied to them so you won't regret it by finding out that you've run out of villagers and there's no one with the farming role for example. Tip number 13, finding out what role your villager has. Now once you have a ton of people in your valley, it's going to be hard for you to remember who has what specific role that you've assigned to them. But don't worry, all you need to do is head over to the characters tab under collections and you can see exactly what roles you have assigned to that specific character. And for the next tip, hanging out with your Disney friends. Now this is important because most of your quests are tied behind your friendship level with that character and by hanging out with them, you are literally giving them free EXP to level up no matter what you do. So I would not advise doing your thing around the valley alone as you are just wasting precious EXP that could probably level up your villager by a good 1 or 2 levels which is a lot. Now for tip number 15, speaking of leveling up your friendship level, as I said, more quests and opportunity to unlock new stuff will be mostly tied to your friendship level. And one of the best ways to level up your friendship level with any characters at the start is to simply give them random items. Yes, they do have some favorite items of the day that would skyrocket their friendship level if given to them, but if you urgently need a quick level or two, especially at the start, spamming them random items will work wonders. Do note that gifting them random items in later levels will hardly move their EXP bar anymore. So this method is only good around level 0 to level 5 friendship level. Now speaking of the villager's favorite item of the day, you can actually talk to them and see what they are looking for in that specific day. However, there is a much easier way to find out. So for tip number 16, head over to the characters tab under collection and you are able to see their favorite things of the day just right there. You don't have to go around looking for them anymore and wasting time to speak to them just to find out that you don't have their favorite items in your inventory. I kinda noticed this too late, so hopefully this tip will be a huge time saver for you. Now tip number 17, how to get more dream lights. Now I've already made a video about farming massive amount of dream lights, but to sum it all up in this video, just focus on spamming the dream light duties as they never run out, plus you get crazy amounts of dream lights for simple tasks like gathering apples or changing your outfit. Tip number 18, if you're trying to look for certain animals or resources that maybe a quest is asking for, you can head over to the collections tab once again and the location of these materials will be right there for you. Just keep in mind that not everything is right there so I will be sharing with you how you can find them later in the video. Tip number 19, and this is important, the game runs based on real time, meaning there is a true night and day cycle according to your local time zone. Animals will spawn depending on the time and day, villagers will have their own routine and sleeping schedule and crops will go based on real life time, so there's a lot to it. However, do not think of messing around with your system's clock because of this, which means do not change your time on your Nintendo Switch, your PC or even your PS4 just because you want your crops to grow faster. This will bug your game out and potentially ruin your entire save file. There have been confirmed reports that people have been corrupting their save file because of this. So please do not purposefully change your system's time. Tip number 20, the events tab. 
So for now, there are no microtransactions in the game, but there will be once the game goes free to play. So take full advantage of the current events like the Pixar Fest and claim as many free things as you would like before it ends as these are time limited events, which means they will not be coming back unless stated otherwise. Tip number 21, I wanna talk about the first thing you should upgrade with coins, and that is your inventory slot. Your backpack inventory should be the very first thing to come in mind when thinking about spending your coins as it only costs about 5k coins at the start but it quickly ramps up from there. However, the 5k upgrade is so well worth it that you might as well get it anyways. Having a full backpack in this game does not feel good at all, so combine this tip with the storage tip as well and you shouldn't have any more inventory problems. What is next tip number 22? It's about making money and without a doubt, it doesn't matter what level you are or what you love doing, but farming crops is definitely the best way to earn gold coins. You can start off with carrots if you are new and then slowly move on to pumpkins which are more for the later game. But anyway, farming crops is definitely the best way because it allows you to do whatever you want to do in the game while waiting for your crops to grow and sell which in turn make it more fun as you are earning money from the site as well while you focus on other things. So get started on farming if you haven't already. But yeah, these are the 22 tips that would definitely make your life easier in Disney Dreamlight Valley. Like I said, there are so much more to the game still, so you can head right over here to check out my other tips and tricks videos to make your experience in Disney Dreamlight Valley so much more fun and memorable. That's it for now, hopefully you enjoyed this one. This is the Viperian signing off, thanks for watching, and as always, stay awesome, and I will see you in the next video.